Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury Three Three with a new possible show. I'm experimenting a bit because I realized last week, which is actually partly why there was no Saturday stream, is that I'm doing a lot of Zero K casts that are just showing the game being played. They're not nothing really that intensive. I mean, it's exciting, yeah, but it's not particularly informative. There's nothing. Every single time I do it, it's pretty much the same every time. So what I want to do is experiment a bit with a format where I just go over one game and kind of try to break it down. Now, in all fairness, I'm not the best 0k player, so I'm probably going to screw up a lot of the analysis, but I am going to at least try to go through something of a thought process for analyzing the games to begin with. Obviously, this will get better over time with practice, but... Yeah, first game, first time is going to be a drone fail with us game, which is going to be on Eye of Horus. Now let's go over the map first, because I think this is a really important thing that should be brought up, is the map... Uh, well, if this stupid thing would actually work... Uh, sorry about this, I'm not sure why this is not working, or why it's... What the hell? Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So yeah, this map is fairly flat. Though oh, there are some hills, and I wanted to get into this before players chose their factories. I was hoping to get into this before players chose their factories. I want to talk about the factories that should be gone for, but we do see that Failthouse is going for Cloaky and Drone is going for Hovers. I'm going to say this is a flat map. It has some hills, and it has quite a few choke points. So I was going to say that good factory choices typically are, and drop the volume as well, that was playing. Good factory choices typically are cloaky, light, <sighs> cloaky light vehicle, hovercraft, and heavy tank. Those are typically the factories you go for in this map, at least to start out. You, d I've not really seen air much used as a start on this map. I mean, it could be used in this map, but I don't really see it very much. So yeah, we have cloaky versus hover. So from here. Let's break down. So Failthos is going to be probably starting out with a few raiders. Now the thing with this matchup is that Drone has the mobility advantage. And on a map this size, I mean it's 12 by 14, it's not huge, but it isn't particularly small either. Drone will have an easier time getting around and defending a bit, just because Drone seems to be by and large faster and also considerably tougher. Cloakybots, they are much more reliant on getting in, doing a lot of raiding, dealing some damage. They aren't as many who play the game know, they aren't the toughest units in the game by far, but they are pretty sneaky and can get around and deal a lot of damage. So let's see what the players start out with in terms of unit count or unit composition. So first off, we have Failthos, who, because they are on a fairly large map, decides to go for early constructor rather than going for early raider. And they only have one glaive coming in as well, while Drone, on the other hand, takes advantage of the mobility and just goes for the dagger right off. Now, point the dagger is actually not that much faster than a glaive. Like, a dagger is 4.8 compared to 3.8, which is, like, 20% faster. It is it is a speed advantage, but it's not huge. However, Felthas will have, as a result of this, a harder time attacking. They will need to defend. I mean, in this situation, this is a little bit dangerous because the dagger just has, well, more of everything. More health, more speed, more damage. Less fire rates, but the only thing. So drone comes in for the attack. Felthos is setting up, and I should also I also want to point this out too. I've been mentioning this several times, and I just want to get into this really in depth. So Felthos, as you see, and drone did this as well, but drone's a little bit further ahead in their economy production. Two metal. Now this I should point out is a little over two metal per extractor, it's two and a quarter, but that's close enough. Generally what you want to do, because your commander starts out with plus 4 and plus 6. Plus 4 metal per second, plus 6 energy per second. And factories will generally try to use 10 of each. So, this means that you want to have 10 of each as soon as possible. The easiest way to do this is to have two metal extractors, typically, because typically it's two metal per extractor, two metal per second per extractor, and three solar collectors or the equivalent in wind generators if the wind generators will produce a grand total of six energy or more. Sorry, two solar cutters. Three is a bit much. 
Two is enough, or the equivalent of usually four wind generators. By cost, it's four. You might get lucky, it might be three, but it's usually four. That is how you'd start, basically. At this point, Failtoss has done that, is slightly ahead, and does have more production. Drone right now, energy is their bottleneck. Though they are getting another solar, solar plant, which will even that out. But Drone went for three metal extractors first, before energy. So Drone, not the biggest deal, but just to point that out, because... Some people have mentioned in my cast I should point out how that works, how the opening build order goes. That is the opening build order. Oh, I'm sorry. I will increase the back panel buttons a bit. There we go. So I'm just trying to make... Yeah, this back panel thing, I'm trying to figure out the sizing for that. Totally separate thing. Technical issue. Anyhow. Hopefully that's better for you, car repair. Now. As you can see, drone... So, drone right now... Like I said, has the mobility advantage, does have pressure on Failthos. Failthos really probably should be going out and trying to deal some pressure as well, but has to deal with the daggers coming in. So, Drone, as you can see, has been going around here. Good idea. Drone going around here, the northeast side, probably could go to the northwest side. If I were I were Drone, I'd do this as well. This is definitely the right thing to do. Now, Failthos, on the other hand, Failthos switching over to Warriors, basically to stop daggers as they come in. However, let's consider other options. I mean, we could be... Felthos could be going instead for more Glaives. Try to go for a bit of a counter raid. Now, on this map, that is a hard thing to do, and I can see why Felthos wouldn't do it. Although, it could be done at this stage in the game, having five Glaives and then going for a major harass in the back. Another option could be, of course, to go for... Okay, I guess you could go for size. It's a bit of a riskier option, but it would allow for... Basically, the fact that the space is harder to get through, I mean, there's more possibility of being intercepted and spotted, it reduces that risk by making the units cloaked basically all the way there, unless they're run into, which is actually kind of hard to do. That or Fail Thoughts could just build up more static defenses and then go from there. But, as I guess we, like I said, we see that instead of going for Warriors and probably going to use that to help defend as the daggers are coming around. Because right now, Drone does have this... This valley, or this choke point is contained. This dagger is basically in the way. It's not very well contained though. In fact, the dagger is about to die. So Drone did just lose that. Bit of a big deal. Drone is going for more daggers and going for constructors as well. Drone really doesn't care that much about dealing a whole lot of damage. I mean, that warrior wasn't even necessary. Right now, Failthos is actually probably going too much for warriors. And from what I mentioned before, the glaives, or possibly even sizes, as Detrino's pointing out, wouldn't be a bad idea. Like, glaives, and we see Felthos is coming with the harassment. If Felthos had gone, instead of this warrior, because that's 220 metal, and glaives, by the way, are about 60 metal each? 65, I think. Yeah, 65 metal each. So this could have been six glaives. This could have easily been double. However, it wasn't. And because of that, this defender's going to stop it. The defender will kill one and a half glaives, will kill one glaive, heavily damage another. And the glaives will be able to come in, but at this point, they cannot go any further. And they, they'll they only get, be able to get rid of this metal extractor, and then the daggers will kill them, and that'll be it. This is where the warrior would have been a better option overall had... Sorry, the glaives would have been a better option overall over the warrior, being that only one dagger came in. Granted, Felthos only knew that there was one dagger over here, didn't know about any other daggers coming in. But still, the Warrior, and now going to Rocco's, not the best option. At this point, that is giving up a lot of territory to Drone. Like, Drone, at this point, can easily take everything up to the midpoint of the map, and Failthos cannot stop them. And as I mentioned before, Cloakybot does best when it can actually deal with the opponent directly, can attack. So right now, Drone is able to expand, able to build up, and as we see, Failthos is actually going for size. So Failthos is going to go for it. Now, this is important because here's the thing. So, let's just analyze this because I'm actually falling back in my old habits. Let's think about this. What can the Scythe do right now? Also, what does Felthos know? Felthos right now knows about nothing, actually. The smoke here is a bit of a bug. We don't see anything that Felthos has scouted out that existed. Now, being spectators and having an omniscient point of view, we do know what's going on, which I'm sure would help Felthos a great deal, and imagine that Felthos would really enjoy, most players I'm sure would really enjoy having complete omniscience over the game when they're playing. It would really help them out, I'm sure. However, 
that's not the case. So bear that in mind, of course. But let's think about targets. So some targets, naturally, are metal extractors. Metal extractors make generally good targets. And right now, drone actually does not have much static defense by the metal extractors. These two here, well, actually, this one here, not so much. This one here is pretty well guarded. This, it's in a fortress of solar collectors. I don't see any easy way a scythe is going to get in there. Not, no, a scythe won't get in there. That would be for follow-up forces. Scythe could take out the defenders. I should point out that scythes do have... Scythes have 200 damage per hit. So they can two-shot a defender. This is rather important because right now, one of the issues that's going to come in for any raiding with these scythes is that they'll have this metal extractor and these ones if they actually go over there and that'll be about it and they'll have decloaked so a better option might then be to hit the defenders because hitting the defenders first means that there's no static defense in the way this is a bit of a risky option because it's not clear what drone will have in their base i mean maces are being built up so the side is going to have to deal with those but getting rid of the defenders that if there are no other follow-up forces does allow for basically getting rid of all the metal extractors without any concern Those are kind of the big categories of targets to go for. We'll see what Felthos goes for once that scythe is built up. But until then, we just have to go with what is being built up now, which is, like I said, Rockos and Warriors, pretty much leaving Felthos entirely on the defensive. Almost entirely on the defensive. Not much can be done about that, and that means, of course, that Felthos is going to have to make these sides count. Like There's two sides, two sides, three Warriors coming after that. So the warrior is just going to help defend, which, like I said, drone continuing to go about the size of the map just to see what's going on. And drone right now, I mean, drone is really doing this. <sighs> drone is doing this right. The camera is not. I'm going to double check that. Hit the arrow keys and seems to go back occasionally to, yeah, seems to go back to wherever I last clicked or last arrowed. That is a bug. I have to look into that. But technically, should decide. Drone is going for maces. And drone... I'm not entirely sure why they're going for maces, because there are rogues, and properly kited rogues and maces, I mean, maces do, let's see, 355 compared to, I think it's 460? 455. So, that's a huge range difference. Rockos have about, they're a, a little under, tw like, 20% larger range than a mace. They can easily, or not easily kind of mace due to the speed difference. I mean, speed 2.1 compared to speed of 2.2. Nope, never mind. Rocco's perfectly counter kites. Or sorry, perfectly counter maces by kiting. Now, the terrain, of course, is not the best for kiting with all these hills here. But, I mean, Rocco's can actually go up these hills. These these hills allow bot pathing. Red just means they're slow. Purple or black means that it's unpathable. But yeah, Rocco's, in theory, beat maces. Now, in practice, of course, it comes down to positioning, and it'll come down to how much kiting is actually done. But, yeah. And also, the fact that maces can kind of dodge the shots, especially at max Rocco range, which is what's going to have to be in order to avoid getting killed by the mace. So, the Rocco is going to have to deal with this. However, the Rocco still has the range advantage, but does not have... Ooh, actually, does have the advantage of surprise. But the mace, like I said, can dodge at this range. And the interesting use of warrior trying to get in the way, trying to just keep the mace distracted at the same time, but that's a little bit tricky. Now, the size going around the back. This is important. And now, I should point out what exactly is in the back now. Not much has changed. The defenders are still prime targets, as is this metal extractor. Now, the metal extractor expansions over here are also good targets. Well, this defender would have to go first as well. The thing is, there are only two sides. So, Failthos... Failthos is pretty much going to have to hit targets, fade away, let them cloak again and keep Drone a bit scared. But if Felthos tries to attack too frequently, like tries to attack and then attack something else and attack something else and just keep going, those sides are going to not make cost at all. And given Felthos' position, I mean, bear in mind, Felthos does not have half the map, which Drone does have. Which means Felthos needs to make these sides really count. And in order to do that, Felthos is going to have to be fairly careful with them. I think the biggest thing to do would be Attack a couple things and put Drone on edge. And if Drone doesn't respond, attack more things to put Drone more on edge. And if Drone does respond, that means that Drone is investing more into their main base and less into their expansions, allowing Felthos to push a bit further towards the expansions. 
damaging them and ultimately see, forcing drone to cede territory. But that'll only work if these sides are well microed. We'll see how Felthos managed to deal with that. And at the same time, Felthos is still applying pressure to drone's front base, which is a good thing to do, partly because this means the sides aren't really even suspected. It's always good to do this. If you're doing for any sort of backdoor harassment, make sure that you're doing something else at the same time. Do something that keeps your opponent distracted, and as you see, the Rocco does get rid of the mace, so bear that in mind. I mean, in general, mace is a riot, Rockos are skirmishers. In general, skirmishers do beat riots. It's not an unusual thing. And actually, right now, Drone's commander is in a bit of a tight spot, will need to be pulled back. But at the same time, Drone is still getting a lot of the map, does have defenders up, and the sides are coming in. So... Okay, this is... This is not going to work. It should be fairly obvious that this will not work. This is a really bad position. These sides have... Like, Felthos right now can see this. Felthos, however, is looking at this. Here's the, That's the risky part here. Felthos is focused on this fight. Because, of course, Felthos doesn't want to lose this fight. But at the same time, Felthos really, really, really doesn't want to lose these sides. And I think... Right now, we're seeing a bit of an issue in camera priority. Like, what's going to happen is Feltas is going to see what's going on here after the size of attack. And that'll be well after Drone sees it. That'll be well after the Defender starts attacking. And luckily, luckily for Feltas, no mace has come up quite yet. But still, there is a mace in the base. The second mace hasn't come in yet, but there's still a mace in the base. So I'm actually not that lucky at all. These sides, both of them need to fade right now, and they are not doing that. Like, Felthos, this is not working out as well as it could have. One of the sides is managing to get away, but both sides were really necessary to get... Like, like I said, the defenders go down in two shots. Now, Felthos seems to have given up on this, and is going a bit more for air. Which will be interesting, we'll come back to later. Because right now with air... And here's the thing with air. Actually, nothing's been built yet. Here's the thing with air. Ravens. Ravens are a common fixture of air combat. Now, phoenixes are also fairly common, but against hovercrafts, you don't see them very much, for good reason. Especially when it's maces. There's no reason to do that. However, ravens are really powerful against spread-out metal extractors. Now, drone has mentioned before, and we've seen a game with drone before, where drone, as a counter to an air start, went for just mass expansion, which is a good idea, because... The Ravens will have a hard time dealing with everything if you're building quickly enough. However, at this stage in the game, Felthos is 30 metal. A Raven can be popped out every 10 seconds. Or every 15 seconds if... Sorry. I'm not quite 15 seconds, but every 20 seconds or so. Yeah. Either 10 seconds if it's focused, or 20 seconds if it's split between this and the Clickabot Factory. I think of all the metal is split between this and the Clickabot Factory. So, Felthos can easily push out quite a few Ravens. Even like four or five ravens will be able to tear apart pretty much everything drone has in about three waves. And these defenders are not sufficient to deal with it. Although more defenders are being built. Drone, on the other hand, I think suspects this. Given the fact that the defenders are being built, drone does like to consolidate with defenders from the looks of it. I mean, drone has been consolidating with lotuses and defenders, but defenders have been built more around the map more readily. Against Clokeybot, that makes sense, because they're cheap defenses that can be built everywhere, and they do get rid of glaives. Like, small groups of glaives will go down to defenders, no problem. But, the air factory is not being focused on right now. It, well, it's going to get helped by this caretaker once that caretaker comes up. We'll see what's built once that's done. However, at the center of the map, Drone is having to cede some territory to Felthos, but Felthos really is not putting any pressure on Drone at all. This entire game, Drone has just been sort of hanging out, and there is a scythe once again, taking care of another metal extractor, but I should point out, Drone has 40 metal to fail Thos's 30. Part of that being overdrive. Actually, quite a lot of it being overdrive, come to think of it. There's, yeah, 33% overdrive. Not bad overall, but still, Drone is well ahead of fail Thos right now. Entirely. And fail Thos does not even have an army advantage right now. This airplane plant needs to work and needs to work really well. Now, Felthos going for overdrive instead, and I can sort of see why. Because right now, Felthos has... Actually, no, I can't see why. This this fusion plant isn't even really connected to much of anything. It's going to be connected to this one metal extractor, but that's about it. And even then, it's not helping all that much. Like, what'll... 
what will be needed is a couple of pylons. Or a few solars just connecting things up. And now we do have ravens coming in. That is important. There are ravens coming in while at the same time, drone decides... Probably just predicting that something's going to happen. Decides to go for gunship himself. Probably going to go for brawler. Now, for a while... <laughs> If I keep doing this as a general thing, as a general show for the week, the weeknights, I'm going to be saying this a lot. The player should switch to Brawler. It's the middle of the game. It's seven, it's eight or six, nine minutes into the game. A Brawler switch should happen right about now. This will probably be common for a little while because counter strategies to Brawlers and just reading out when your opponent is likely to go for a Brawler is not, it's not like something that seems to be coming up very much. And I think Drone... Going for the Brawler, and okay, here's the thing. The Ravens have just gone for the Mace. I kind of missed that because that was just really important. But the Ravens have gone for the Mace. Not the best option. Right now, Failthos... Just pause here. What does Failthos know? It's always important to ask this question because in RTS game, it's hidden information. It's impossible to tell without actually looking. Failthos knows about this. Knows about these. Knows about these. And probably can reasonably expect to at least suspect that these have been taken. There is a lot of spots in the map that Failthos should at least reasonably know there are metal extractors. And those are prime targets. That or defenders. Defenders are also prime targets because that allows for other units to get in without any harassment whatsoever. Like, they can get in with impunity. But the big thing is metal extractors and... Failthos is not going for that. Looks like Failthos is going for a commander dive, and that's not a bad idea necessarily either. But at this stage in the game, Metal Extractors or, okay, Constructors are also good. I will give Failthos that. Constructors are not a bad choice either. But after that, Metal Extractors are the biggest thing to go for. These Glaives have the right idea, or the right idea is being done with these Glaives, but given that the Brawlers have come into play, which... Like I said, could kind of be read out by the lack of anything that Drone had. Like, Drone had no hovers coming in for a while. There's actually... I don't think there are any maces on the map left. Yeah, casual glance, there are no maces left. There are no ground units left for Drone. And Felthos switching natural... I mean, as would be natural, switching over to Gremlin. There's really not, not much to say about that. That is what you do. That is... Luckily for Drone, something... Sorry, luckily for Felthos, something that has been revealed early enough on that the Brawlers aren't going to lock down the factory. Because as we've seen in other games, Brawlers will lock down factories. If they meet up with a factory, the factory is done. If there's no anti-air nearby, that factory will not be producing anti-air. Now, this is what I have to... Like, Felthos right now is... Okay, getting rid of the last two maces. Those maces would have probably gone down anyway. And at this point, Felthos is losing a lot of the initiative, and that is where I really don't understand what they're doing. More sides have been built, which are going over to the front and around. And I don't think, surprisingly, how. But yeah, Failthos, mostly due to lack of scouting, mostly due to the fact that the Ravens did not go forward enough to see what was happening, Failthos will not know about this metal extractor, and these sides will hit it. Now, it's really important when using sides, generally to avoid metal extractor spots. Like, in general, do not go near metal extractor spots unless you intend to kill the metal extractor there. Assuming it is, like, assume it's there if you haven't seen it in a while. And just avoid it. Go, especially on this map where all these hills are bot pathable. Like, this could have gone around this way. Oh, this. But yeah, it could have gone along that path. But it didn't. Or they didn't. And as a result, they're going to hit this metal extractor... Or, no, not quite. Okay, that got, that was close. But that was definitely a risk that did not need taking. Now, at the same time, Felthos trying to get back the initiative by using a vamp against Tridents. Not the most useful thing. At this point, Felthos is not in the best spot for air. Like I said, they've lost the initiative. They do know that the Tridents are over on the... Okay, let's see what they know. They know the Tridents are on the east side of the map. They know that there's a lot of metal over on the west side of the map. A lot of metal shards have been taken. So... This point, a good move would be to attack the west side of the map. We'll see if they do that. That would be a good thing to do with the Ravens, though. I think they're going to keep the Ravens at home instead. And I don't agree with that. But we'll see if they go for it. And it looks like, yes, Felthos, not quite going for that, but is going to try to bomb out the Brawlers, which is actually still a possible thing. 
I'm gonna try to bomb on the Brawlers with the Ravens, and I can see using the Ravens for that, though it is... It is still a move that implies to me that initiative has been lost. Okay, never mind. Science actually were useful in that regard, because they got rid of Drone's Commander, limiting Drone's push. However, let's look at what Drone has. Drone has five constructors, actually more than five constructors. Drone has about a dozen constructors, most of which are up front. There's these over here. There's five over in the center of the map. There are, let's just select all of them. There are about half a dozen inside the base or that are leaving the base to help assist production and deal with the reclaim. Drone still has a lot of territory that, given the fact that Feltas has air and has been producing air quite a lot and has had a lot of metal to produce air with, this this could easily be dealt with. Like, bombers could destroy this very trivially. Given that all the tridents are over on one side of the map and are moving into a fairly risky position, I mean, at this point, Feltas is not prepared for it, so Drone, drone not being read out here and ultimately will be able to deal with pretty much everything that Feltas has from the air. But... Yeah, Drone also going for air of their own, so at this point, like I said, Feltas lost a lot of the initiative because they did not go really for anything that that those Ravens could do, because when they got the Ravens, they couldn't really attack. They couldn't push in. The Cloakabots weren't doing much. They had some sides that were sort of helping, but the sides aren't really doing much at this point, especially with the Brawlers out. And when... When those Ravens came out, the Brawlers were not known about. They kind of could have been read out due to the lack of hovercrafts, the relative lack of hovercrafts. But ultimately... This is... Like, there are a lot of mexes going around... That are not attacked. Like, none of the mexes have really been attacked with the, with the Ravens, and at this point it's too late. There really isn't much time left to actually kill these Ravens. Like, the Tridents... Sorry, kill the Tridents. The Ravens are basically dead, and now a lot of resources are going into rebuilding those Ravens. And also trying to basically get the ground game won, given that the air game seems to be lost. But then again, the air game being lost means Brawlers can be built and basically tear apart everything. So at this point, Feldos really was just too timid overall. And now it's too late. And now Feldos cannot attack. Feldos has to, at this point, push as safely as they can. Use Gremlins, use Rockos. Like, they have to do what they're doing here. And actually, from here, I would almost recommend going for... Hmm. I almost want to say Heavy Tanks, just for the actual beatdown power. Like, for just Reapers. Just pushing through with Reapers so that the Maces can't do much. Because the Rockos lose a lot of initiative when they're fighting Maces. Yeah, they can win, but that kiting means they're losing position. Which means that, ultimately, Drone is not actually losing territory that quickly. Something like Reaper, however, something that actually tank this. That could work far better. And Feltas has the resources to, to pull that off. They could go for a fact switch. They go for a tank fact switch if they wanted to. That seems unlikely though. But anyway, Feltas is in a tough spot. And all right, I gotta resize this again. Still getting used to this, sorry. The actual si how much room to give the factory panel is a little bit of a trick. But anyway. Just pause this and look at the map once again. So, fail thoughts right now. The gremlins are out of position. And here's the thing. The gremlins are over here, and they're moving into position, which is good. Drone, on the other hand, building up a shield bot factory, which is pretty much game winning. On top of this, this shield bot factory will go for Felon Thug Ball. And Felon Thug Ball is the thing to do. That's right here, actually. Felon Thug Ball is the thing to do, especially when you have this much position. I mean, that's a thing to do, but one of many. But it's definitely a thing you can easily do when you're in a position that you can hold defensively. Like, Drone could hold this position easily for about five minutes. I mean, Felthos could break through it if Felthos really concentrated their efforts, so even then I don't think they would be able to. But then there'll be a Felon Thug Ball right behind it. And I think at this point, there isn't much that Felthos can do with a Cloakubot factory and an air factory, given the investments they've made. Especially investing as heavily as they are into Rocco's does not seem helpful. Honestly, sides would probably work out fairly well just because they would basically distract Drone. They keep Drone from attacking. They keep Drone having to pull back Brawlers in order to deal with sides. Because the sides just keep going around, tearing apart everything. And the Brawlers keep them to go back, defend. They wouldn't be able to actually deal with what's going on because wouldn't be able to attack because Feldos is basically forcing Drone's hand. 
Or if they didn't do that, then Drone would basically be seeding a lot of metal extractors. And at this point, Feltos still has a fair amount of anti-air. They could still deal with the Brawlers. The Tridents are being a problem, but there are still Gremlins. There are still, well, not quite Rockos. They don't, those don't really help. But yeah, there are still anti-air units. Felthos, at least for a little while, had the ability. Drone at this point has pretty much overtaken that. But has for a little while had that ability to deal with this, and... Yeah, no easy way to distract that. So at this point, Felthos... They are pretty much on death's door. I honestly don't know what else to do. And the shield bot factor here, that's just a clincher. Even the brawlers are kind of just a clincher, but the shield bot factory definitely is a clincher. Because the brawlers have actually been dealt with fairly well. The map this size... With Brawlers coming in as late as they did, the Brawlers were countered. That worked out fine. Now, the Brawlers is going for the Geo Plant, which, yeah, that's gone no chance. But Failthos, there's not much more to analyze. I was a little bit concerned about this game, because, by the way, I did actually watch the re some replays beforehand, including this one, to think about what to talk about and also what to do. But yeah, at this stage, this game is... I mean, it's fairly obvious that the game is basically over, unless Failthos changes factory. That... The Gremlins are doing a pretty good job, but the Shield Bots are going to come in. The Thug Felon Ball is going to tear apart the Gremlins, and... The Rockos aren't going to help either, and the fact that Felthas has no knowledge of what's going on inside of Drone's base. Has no knowledge of the Shield Balls, has no knowledge of this switch at all, because if they knew about the switch, they would build a Sharpshooter or two. But that would just split their forces as well. And Felthas has quite a bit of cash. I mean, they have 50... well... 40 to 50 medals, depending on Reclaim. So Felthas can actually build up a lot of good stuff. But they do not have all that much to build that is actually that useful in the situation this late in the game. They don't have enough... They're losing Cloaky Bot units, and they're going to be losing far, far more once the Felon Ball comes in. And even the Felon Ball is not that big yet, but they're going heavily for anti-air, and the Ground Switch is going to just stop this. The Rockos will not be enough, and the Sharpshooter will finish this off, and I'm really not sure what's left to say unless Felthos goes for a Factory Switch. Because Drone, at this point, has gone for... He's you know, gone for four factories, which... Four factories is not unusual in Eye of Horus, but... Basically, at that point, your opponent can just... Or, the person with four factories can just build anything they want. Pretty much any role or sub-role or anything at all they want. They have the capacity to build. So, at this point, Felthos is basically going to lose. The Rockos, however, are doing a fairly good job. And the thing is, when you're in the situation... Let's just see how the Rockos... So the Rockos are just on fight move. A bit of a risky thing to do. Like, Rockos on fight move are fairly powerful because they do have the Skirm AI, which is always helpful. The one thing I find a little bit problematic in my own experience with fight move is that Rockos do have a tendency to clump. Now, against Thug Felon, not the biggest deal, but it's an important thing to keep in mind that, as you can see, the Rockos tend to back off into each other, meaning that against units that deal splash damage, Rockos on fight move is a great way to lose your Rockos. Because the units that you're fighting against just dodge the Rockos, and then the splash damage destroys them. An important thing to point out, although it looks like the Rockos are also in direct attack, which is good. They are focusing on fire, and they are getting rid of actually one of the felons. Sorry, not felons, one of the thugs. Felon's not dead yet. But even then, Drone just has way too much at this point. Like, Drone has 10 plus K in army. 12K in army. Like, they have four times the army of failed us. There's... I'm just going to fast forward at this point, because there is really not much more to be said here. Failthos has lost this game, and doesn't know it yet. Yeah, there we go. Failthos, GG's. And that is... That is my first try at analyzing... Now, yeah. 40 minutes worth of analysis. Hope you enjoyed that, and... Yeah, please feel free to give constructive criticism, or specific criticisms as to things I missed, or things I could have talked about. And I emphasize constructive criticism. Bear in mind this, I, while it does say Shadow 333 casts 0k, this is meant to be an analysis show, and I'm probably get proper title cards later on. But if there's anything that you guys noticed that I should point out, or any part of my strategic analysis that really didn't make sense, or really could have been done better, or parts that you want me to focus on, or that I shouldn't focus on, and no, I'm probably not going to ever go over that Metal Extractor thing, Metal Extractor Solar Collector thing at the start again in these because it was mentioned in one of my casts to go over it. I've gone over it. It was a few months ago someone mentioned that I should go over how the opening build affects things. That's been done. 
That has been accomplished. If someone asks, again, I'll just have to point them to this video, the beginning of this video, because I went over it. Three mechs, two solar. And then do whatever you want based on what you need. Energy more than metal. But get as much metal as you can. That's basically how it goes. But anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. And that is going to be it for me. Like I said, it's just going to be one game that I'm analyzing. So that was the game. And it was a pretty good game. And it was also a game that showed that brawlers, despite being kind of complained about as overpowered, actually are fairly counterable. It's just a matter of partly knowing when your opponent's going to go brawlers there. You can read it just because brawlers are so expensive that if your opponent isn't doing much, if they, aren't on, if they were on the ground and they're starting to peel away from the ground, you're not seeing much, especially if you start probing their base and figuring out what's in there. Like send a glaive or two in their base just to probe it. And you see that there's not much being built. Or especially if you see the gunship plant, obviously. But if you see that there's not much being built in general, your opponent isn't doing much, they are probably going for brawlers. Now, of course, that's a little tricky because your opponent may not be doing much. But the difference between much and any... I mean, they might be doing enough that it still obfuscates the use of the brawlers. However, if you see fewer brawlers, sorry, fewer units on the ground than you should expect, then suspect brawlers or near switch. And build some anti-air accordingly. However, like I said, this map is possible to spot out more easily in advance, so help it's easier to avoid on large maps than on small maps. Yeah, overall, that was an interesting game. And that, once again, is it for me tonight, so good night, everyone. Thank you for watching.